Phantom are about to release the third um, in a series of books, um, Super Seeds. And we're going to talk about those books today with Jeffrey, who's with us. Welcome, Jeffrey. Hello. Um, what took you back from the acting side and back into the writing side? Is, it, is, that, um, is that a conscious move? That, a particular no, I've, I've written all my life. Mm -hmm. But I've written really as therapy in a sense. Uh, initially, uh, it's just that as an actor, you're very much at the mercy of other people employing you. Mm -hmm. And as a writer, you're in complete control of everything you're doing and all the different characters and you can play all the characters in your head. And, and, and so I loved that. So I've always written all my life. Have you tended to piece the writing in the past around the sort of acting roles? So if you've, you've sort of had a passion for writing for obviously sort of quite a number of years, um, was it something you pieced in between the work? So work came along yes. and you pieced the writing in so between? I, yes, because I've made my living as, a, as an actor. So I just have to drop the writing when I, when mm -hmm. I get a job. Um, and then come back to it. So I never know how long, people often ask me, you know, how long did it take you to write that? Of course, I have no idea, because <laughs> I probably wrote intensively for a few months, mm -hmm. and then suddenly, or um, a few weeks anyway, and then suddenly I'm called away on a theatre job or something, and, mm -hmm. and I pick it up again after. And obviously the opportunity to write for Phantom came along, and obviously you've got uh, Forgotten Fields was the first book you, you published with Phantom. Yeah. Um, where did the idea behind the books come from? Well, the idea, all my books are really about, I just got very interested in writing about the future and where the future is going, where we are at that has implications for sort of futures, sometimes quite close futures, sometimes futures a long way away, and what civilizations will make of each other. I studied history at university and I was very fascinated by the way that different civilizations, different times have different ideas about things, completely different. And, um, and I wondered, I suppose the idea for the Forgotten Fields was how would the future look back at the time that I wrote it? How, how would the future look back and how would it see us? And how would, um, uh, and when all the, hurly-burly of the, the present has gone and you're just looking back on it as history, what would, you, what would you see that was different? And how the future and the past affect each other? It is interesting actually. How long ago did you write the book? So it's written quite a long time ago. It's interesting because it's, it's still quite relevant, I think, and still works today, though, I, though some of the details uh, are different. From, from what's happened. Some of my guesses about the future <laughs> are different, but it's nevertheless, it still remains very relevant. And I think that's true of all the books, that they have a long term, they work in the long term, even though some of the detail is different. It's because it's interesting actually, because the, the, the first book there um, that we published, but actually it's not the, that's not the order you wrote the books in, I understand. No, the very first book was The, um, the Progress Road, and then I wrote The Forgotten Fields, and then that one. And they're about 10 years apart, because, they, um, because of the time it takes me to write them. But I was just very interested. The Progress Road is about a man trying to find his children. And, and it's a sort of an allegory. He, he, he walks along this road into the future. And I have to guess what the, what the present, how the present will affect the future. And, and what the meaning of where we are now will be in, in years to come. And that's always fascinated me, looking across time at the future. And then the second one is set in different time zones, and you think it's the past. Well, I don't, don't want to give away the twists in no, the plot, no. but, but it's about the past and the future and the present and how different uh, times uh, look at each other, and again, there's a sort of dystopian future in it somewhere. And was there a particular reason you chose to publish the order slightly differently to how you wrote the books? Yes, because because the second one, The Forgotten Fields, is more of an uh, an obvious novel, and so it has, you know, a beginning, a middle, and an end in a more conventional way with characters in it. Whereas The Forgotten Fields is more of an allegory. How do you approach writing 
um, in general? How do you how do you approach the art of writing sort of a novel in this in this way? I I don't know. I I'm just I'm fascinated by the way different time travel, which is the third one, is more about time travel. I'm very interested. I studied history at university, and I'm very interested in the way different times and civilizations relate to each other. And when I published it, I thought it, it might appeal to Doctor Who fans because it is, it's uh, very much about sort of traveling through time in one's imagination, mm -hmm. which I think is much more difficult than people imagine. Yes, I thought it was an interesting twist putting the time travel element into it, actually. Um, particularly, as you say, it appeals to the science fiction fans, but actually it gives you some, it gives you some uh, ability to, to sort of weave the plot in a slightly different way if you so choose to do so. Particularly as these are, are books that are looking, if you like, as you've said, at a dystopian future. Mm -hmm. um, you can, in, in effect, with the time travel element of it, twist and turn or, or take it down an avenue that might yeah. be slightly different for you. So it gives you a little bit more creative um, uh, mm -hmm. flexibility, yeah. possibly, in, I would say. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Um, and, and how recently did you write that book? The so I wrote the first one in the 70s. Yes. And the second one in the 80s. And the third one in the 90s. Oh, really? OK. So, and all that, as I say, they kind of, they still remain relevant today. But, and, and the fact that um, they've been published, and so beautifully, it's been beautifully, they're beautifully produced. And it encouraged I gave up after that writing novels because I thought, oh, well, nobody will ever be interested in them. I tend to write, because I make my living out as an actor, I tend to write and just put things on shelves and, and don't think about what I'm going to do with them. And I'm writing them for myself and my own imagination rather than for a market. They don't belong to a genre particularly. So I thought, well, nobody um, can pigeonhole these very easily in a in a in a way. So I tended to just put them on shelves and then I suppose at the end of the, or in the middle of the 90s when I'd written those three, I thought, oh, well, I, I really ought to write plays and things that, um, uh, to, that relate to acting because I might be able to sell those, which indeed I could. So I've had several plays done and radio and in the theatre and adaptation. I'm very keen on George Eliot and was uh, adapting her for the theatre. And it was only when I found uh, Phantom Publishing uh, what, interested in publishing these that I went back to them and, um, and it encouraged me to write another one, which I hope uh, may get done in the future, um, which is much more up to date with the new ideas about it. So it carries on the, the story so it carries again. On, well, it carries on the themes that I'm really interested in about, um, about, uh, about time and the way people look at different civilizations and also about um, the way that big corporations tend to take over our lives. And, and I think that's always been true, um, that, uh, that we are rather helpless in the face of uh, very big business corporations who tend to want to do things for profit. And so like, like at Google at the moment, you know, they take all our information and turn it into profit without telling us uh, what our privacy, you know, that we're giving up our privacy. And, uh, and I was interested in, di in, in different ways. This latest one you see, Superseeds, is about a, a big corporation use it as they do, using scientists, employing scientists um, to produce wonderful things that are going to change the world, but they're going to change the world for the big corporation's profit and not for the good of the world, so that uh, like the scientist who invents a new, um, a new way of a, a new way of fixing nitrogen in food crops so that the, it, they'll be, it'll be wonderful to feed the world. Uh, but in practice, there are hidden costs to that, which the big company involved in making profits from it don't really take into account. And that one has a, a scientist in the present and a scientist in the future who are trying to meet across time and who are finding it um, very difficult to meet across time, because I think it's much more difficult than sometimes 
um, Doctor Who makes out to be able to travel around the galaxy in a TARDIS is a very convenient <laughs> thing to do. Very convenient. You've shown it to be a much more practical uh, difficulty in, re in, in reality in the book. Yes. So it is a very... Because it's about intuitions into the future and half-seeing things and, and, and having intuitions about where it's all going to lead in a dystopian way without knowing quite how. And, and it's a sort of a love story across... an uh, impossible love story because they... They can never, it's very difficult to meet. And if they do, what would it do to time and everything else? And it, it, that, that all interested me a lot. I love the science. I love the science element of it. So I've always read a lot of popular science, which, in, which informs all these books. And I've always read, yes, a lot of history and, and, and things that involve time. And certainly, I think you've, um, you've certainly had an eye through the through the three decades in particular on, on social climate and social change and actually what's, what's really um, happening in our world. By the I think that's it. right. That's exactly it. What is really happening behind the scenes. Mm. So I'm not particularly interested, though you need to take account of the technology and the science involved, but sometimes you never know what the future is going to hold in that respect. I mean, who would have guessed about um, the internet, uh, you know, 50 years ago when I started writing the... Well, um, 30 years ago, whenever it was, when I started writing these, no one would have guessed about the internet. So science always takes unexpected turns, but the social implications remain very similar. It's very strange. They, what's, what lies underneath it, the way it's used, science is used, interests me by big corporations and so forth. What I find fascinating is that the books have been written across three decades, as you've said, um, and they are actually probably as pertinent today, if not more so given some of the, the way that the world is changing. Um, they, they, they're slightly pertinent, I think, and um, have a place very much in today's world, um, which is very odd for, for books that, excuse me, for saying were written 30, 40 years yeah. ago. Yeah, th exactly that. And I think, yes, I think they all do have a relevance mm. now very quite urgently sometimes although they're yes although they're set in the past and the future mm -hmm. did you um when you when you set out and you wrote the first novel um did you originally have it in mind that you you you'd have a trilogy of these or that they would actually move on with the, with the next book actually carrying on again so actually you know the continuing series were you looking at, at this as a longer term continuing series not really i just i they are they're they're all related in the theme but they they were all they're all independent stories so you don't need to know one story to need the next they're all in, set in quite different places and I, but the ideas sort of in them you realize as a writer that you you tend to return to the same themes because they sort of eat away at you and you you want to sort of clarify them and work them out and what you feel about them that's what I find, yeah. So the, the next book's underway, um, and you're hoping to um, have that published with Phantom um, at some time in the, in, in the future. Okay. What other projects are you working on at the moment? Um, well, I'm, I'm a great... Did I mention I'm a great George Eliot um, fan of her novels, and I've just completed a no, um, an adaptation of one of her novels called Felix Holt, which I hope to um, try and... Uh, direct somewhere in the theatre at some point if I can uh, and I'm also writing a play another play at the moment because the novel is just about finished but I need to go back over it this summer and just update it a little bit just make sure it's really on the cutting edge because it'll be the first novel um, that I've written that is abs hopefully if um if it's published will be um absolutely up to date up to the moment with the technology and so forth okay uh, so that would be interesting okay well jeffrey it's been lovely to chat with you this afternoon um thanks very much for spending some time with us thank you